Okay, this is uh, Duncan Fawley, and this is a tutorial looking at a, uh, a standard factory layout, and hopefully it will uh, relate very much to the tutorials in Flexing that you have either done so far or are about to do, and it uh, should make um, a bit of sense. Um, so what uh, what we've got here is a uh, a, a, a floor plan, of quite a basic floor plan and uh, we've got parts coming in so i'm not going to go through every one of these features and stuff but uh, hopefully you get, get it get to understand what's happening and uh, we've got uh, an arrival schedule we've got three companies company a b and c um and let's just go back so that's uh, i should be on triggers uh, they've all got different colors and stuff uh, and they're producing parts coming in and they're going to this conveyor. Uh, so let's reset, run, run the models slowly but surely. And you can see what's happening is we're getting three different color boxes coming in. Um, this has a uh, two labels, palette and it's zero. Uh, and these are all zero. And you should find over here, we have some palettes, and this has a label, a palette of one. So we're able to differentiate between the, uh, the boxes and the palettes, if need be, um, to separate them off. They've also got uh, type numbers, so one, two, and three. Uh, they come in along a, a quite a, a nice conveyor. They're curving around, and we've got... Um, decision points so if we click on here we've got a decision point and you can see what's happening here is uh, this looks like um, this is decision point um, dp2 dp3 and dp4 dp1 being the actual uh, decision point um, what we're looking at now and it's got a uh, a case which takes a box number uh, type, which if it's one, it will go off to the um, DP2 conveyor, so it'll curve around here. And if it's a two, it'll move to the uh, next one and three to the one, final one. Remember when you're putting these decision points, not to put them on the, the boxes and stuff, uh, or else it won't work. And then go on to the, uh, uh, the queues. We have a, another source here. And that's literally just going to um, cre create 50 uh, and it doesn't repeat. So the other sources, one, two, and three, did repeat. This just creates 50 pallets. And so we've, it's like we bought 50 pallets for this company and that's it. We'll talk about the main t uh, these people here in a minute. Uh, but we've got three conveyors. Sorry, uh, combiners. Let's just click on first one, and it's no setup time. Processor time in the combiner. We've got the the setup. Uh, so remember, port one will be the pallet, and it's taking port two and three and four from the th uh, three different boxes, and nothing else is happening here. And the floor is going to first available. First of all, it's only uh, just going to go down to the uh, uh, processor 1A. We've got three production lines, A, B, and C. So uh, this combiner is sending everything to A. And on a similar vein, uh, combiner 2 is sending everything to uh, uh, processor 2, 2A. Sorry, the production lines are numbers 1A, 2A, 2B. And the first one in the production is an A, then the next one is a B. Hopefully to make sense in a second. This is the same, but what's slightly different on the combiner, uh, we do have this, but we've decided to add in a uh, a lookup table. And if we go to the tools options over here, uh, what was the lookup table called? Uh, combiner station three. So. Um, combine the station three. So what this does is it takes a pallet number, uh, 
and um, if it's a palette number one, two, three, four, or five, or six, these are the different combinations of the three boxes. So if it's a palette number three, uh, it will take three of one type of box, two of another, and five of another. So where is it getting the palette numbers from? So if we click on that one, it's uh, Let's just click on here. Triggers. And it, this is creating six different palettes called item type. And it's creating one to six in a D uniform uh, distribution. So it's, um, it will be on there. So. so you can see type two, type five, and so depending on what palette comes along here, it will this combiner will have a different combination of um, boxes on there. So um, these are coming round, they will go to the queue, fill up the queue, and then they'll be called by the combiners. Eventually the combiners will they'll go along. So these these are set up rigid but this combiner has this ability to read the palette number so so that that's a, a, a type four so it's got two four and four on there let's just speed it up so uh, this so we'll go to the top one uh, combiner station one will send to uh, process of one and then two and three for the other two. So in a second, when they get to the end, they'll all jump to the the first production of A. And where else? So we've got a uh, transporter who's going to do that for us. And notice we have a blue box around here. And that's because we, we're using uh, the A star navigate. We've put all the objects in the scene that may uh, interfere with the uh, the transporters, as in the, this transporter, or the operators and stuff. So what's happening on the processor processors A? So let's double click, see what we've got in here happening. Breakdowns, no breakdowns. Floor looking okay, and we are. Changing some shapes and stuff. So hopefully when uh, I'm finished. So when these objects have gone through, it's uh, following through. They'll uh, change shape and they should appear on the uh, the next production line as different shapes. Or so. so let's just stop that. So you can see we've got. Um, different boxes, spheres and cylinders. And then we've got the next production line B. Uh, breakdowns, yes, so it's, we've got some breakdowns here. So it looks like uh, this production B is quite, it's got some breakdowns. So if we go to here, it says we've got three processes, the B production line and they're going to break down with their first failure time of 360 exponential, downtime of 20 exponential, and the next time it breaks down, it's going to be 360, and it's going to call an operator up um, through the center port, and it's got, this is going to change the color from uh, green to red when it's broken, and then. Um, back to green when it gets fixed. So I don't think there's anything else on here. No. Nope. So so they, they'll break down. Let's run it just to see. We should find in a little while we'll get some. There you go. So that's broke, broke down and then it's changed color. So uh, the next is Processor C production line. So what, what, what's happening here? So uh, we've got no breakdowns. We've got some floor. We've got some. Okay, so we've got triggers. 
Right, so let's um, let's zoom up on on this object. So when when this object enters the um, enters the scene, you can't really see it. So let's uh, go to views view settings show connections. What's happened is on entry we have closed the input so you can see the closed input so nothing else can it come into that onto that processor now then what happens is on exit we send a message from current as in processor 1c to current processor so we send in a message to ourselves after three minutes and it's saying parameter one is true now that's all it's saying so now we want need to do something about that so on a message so we've just been sent a message that parameter one is true which means open so that happens on exits when this um pallet and um cylinders leave it will send a message after three um seconds if this is in seconds uh to open that so if we just carry on running um we should be able to see i'll just get near the end it'll go off and then after three seconds it should open up there you go so it's open so we're now ready for the next uh, object unfortunately the, uh, the machine before has broken down this one's worked so they're all set the same um, okay so he's getting fixed before uh, you can uh, carry on so we now we've got a multiprocessor so let's have a look what's happening on the multiprocessor okay so i'm going to go to the second and third things in the processor first so the the second thing is process uh, place item uh process uh, placed item and then close it so you're basically um doing something on on the object uh, it's taking two um, minutes seconds hours i don't know what this is set up uh, and then uh, one uh, one um looks like uh, no no operators required for either of these uh, but what happens is uh, after the twentieth object, so we're currently on thirteen, um, it's going to stop and uh, spend twenty minutes. What on the twentieth? And what it's going to do? It's going to call the operator. We've actually named the operator. So, sorry. Um, here from uh, and it's called operator production line so we've used the little dr droplet thing there and connected to him so he's currently 16 so it looks as though let's just wait here for a second or two longer 16 17 18 19 so it when it gets to 20 it should call the operator there it is but um, the 20th one has just come on because that's 19 is output. So the 20th to arrive. And it's imagine that is like um, either filling up the glue station and uh, bringing some more labels to the machine and stuff. So um, it, it always does the second and third thing in this pr multiprocessor. But on the 20th, it will call the operator and get them to refill um, uh, the parts and stuff get in here I don't think there's much on this other than it's sending to it's got a maximum content uh, it's sending by percentage so um, it's sending 90% uh, to um, port 1 and 10% um, to port 2 so where they're going port 1 and port 2 um, so they're going off to the separator and some are going to uh, processor A so they're going back around so they're getting rejected so some of these are going back around. That's why um, you can you can see the second, this two green, and this one going backwards is going back to process one. So this has been a little bit of a test station. 90% uh, are coming to the separator. And it's just 0 to 10, no breakdowns. Uh, floor, port by case. Uh, and it's taking uh, right at the beginning we mentioned that uh, the boxes if i look here have a pallet and they're zero 
I can just select the palette and that is a one. So this is going to send my case. So it's going to take the value palette. Uh, and if it's a one, therefore it's a palette, send it back right back to the beginning where we've created 50 of. Um, however, if it's a uh, um, label palette is a zero, therefore it's one of our cylinders, boxes and stuff like that, send it on to port, um, to port one. So it goes off out there. So we're all using stores a little bit, but um, I want to come up here, let's reset everything. And let's have a look what we've got here. So we've got some uh, time to staff breaks. So we've got three operators that are working the, op um, the production lines. So when they needed to uh, fill up things or uh, do some processing and stuff. And we have one maintenance person. And we've got a down function. So when the timetable says the down, <coughs> uh, which is red. Uh, so uh, start work, um, what's that, six, seven, eight o'clock. I was a little break in the, um, in the mid morning, then I was a, a break for, for dinner, then goes home about, uh, what would that be, five o'clock, and just does that Monday to Friday. Um, you can see that, that this is set to, to idle. So what happens when it's idle? It, um, it goes to an object called break. It's 100% priority. So it takes complete and utter um, priority over anything else. And where is break? Well, it's in the canteen area. There we go. So it's there. So what we should find is uh, they've got these uh, walls here. Uh, so at uh, 12 o'clock, I think it was 12 o'clock and maybe 10 o'clock. I'll just crank it up a bit. There we go. Uh, you can see them come in and go out. Uh, let's get to night time. Uh, what's really nice is it takes so much priority that even if he's carrying boxes, he brings a box with him. Uh, so there we go. It's uh, looking like it's changing color from red to yellow. That's because they're standing in exactly the same position. And uh, so it's uh, eight o'clock at night. So they're, uh, I didn't even send them home. Um, uh, so the, the, it's just flashing. Then uh, it's kicking. There they go. They're off. Okay. Okay, so we, uh, what we've done here is created a, a, a flexing model that has most of the things that either you will or have covered in this uh, flexing uh, set of workshops, and I hope they've been useful. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.